Hey everyone, welcome to Tablescapes with me, Sarah Gunn. I'm here to make your world more beautiful. I love the creativity of styling a table, and I'm so excited to be here to help you to style beautiful tablescapes for your family and friends, because I truly believe every table can be a work of art. But before we start this episode, do me a favor and subscribe to this channel, and like, share, and comment on the video. So how do you create the perfect tablescape? You start with some inspiration. In this case, it's a seafood steam pot, which reminds me of my East Coast roots in Nova Scotia, where I spent most of my childhood on the beach. Meals like this are supposed to be hands-on and messy, so you wanna protect your table. You could use craft paper, but I like to reuse items I already have around the house. I found in the basement this really great coastal-inspired ticking stripe paper that I'm just gonna roll down the entire length. The great thing about this is it's gonna protect your table and look great. You wanna choose a paper that's heavyweight though. If it's really thin, it's gonna tear while you're eating and you're basically gonna unwrap your table during the meal. Next, let's layer in some stylish function with place settings. A lot of people like to start their table with the centerpiece, but we're gonna start with each place setting. Now, instead of using a charger or a placemat, I thought it would be really creative to use these rustic cutting boards at each place setting. Not only do they lift the food up closer to your face, which is probably not a bad idea with a messy meal like this, they also act as a surface for you to crack your lobster if you need it. Instead of dinner plates, I chose these wide rimmed bowls, which are fantastic for holding in all the different elements of this feast. For napkins, I went with these oversized tea towels and I tucked them under the bowls on the cutting board and have them draping over the table. They're a great option because they're a lot larger, more absorbent, and you can even use it as a bib. I'm not letting go because it'll fall. <laughs> and I added some simple brushed nickel flatware to each place setting. Now, it's time for drinks. I love the look of on-trend cane-wrapped glassware, but they can be super expensive. So I'm gonna show you how to DIY your own at a fraction of the cost. Here's what you'll need. Cut the cane slightly longer than the width of the glass using a sharp pair of scissors. You want to cut along the horizontal lines to keep the edges looking tidy. And you want the cane to wrap around about two thirds the height of the glass. Then, use your hot glue gun to glue one edge of the cane to your glass and hold it in place. Do the same thing with the other end and hold it. Make sure you glue the cane to the glass so that the glass doesn't slide through when you try to pick them up. And there you go. You have a cane covered glass. It's time to consider your centerpiece. Now that each place setting is done, it's time to style the center of the table. Now I love a pretty centerpiece, but in this case, the food is gonna be the star of the show. This large tray works really well because it fits right in the center and the handles mean it's easy to carry from your kitchen to your table. This covered basket adds texture to the table and is great to house warm buns to dip in your melted butter. Warm buns? <laughs> you can never have enough napkins at a seafood boil, so I used this utensil caddy to add a bunch more to the table. It adds, again, a little more texture and it balances out the wicker at the other end of the table. Time to add a personal touch. Because this is a fun and potentially new dining experience for your guests, why not create a little seafood starter kit at each place setting? Starting with a metal basket that you set inside your bowl. Then you wanna add a small bowl for that delicious butter. Some seafood tools to crack that lobster and then a little personalized card on how to crack a lobster step-by-step. Step. 
you can write this yourself or you can create it using a free app like Canva the way I did and then print it off, tuck it in the back and you can either send these home with your guests or keep them for your next dinner party. To add one final touch to each place setting, I found these sweet little seagulls in a bunch of different designs. I added everyone's initial to the boot. You can use stickers or a marker for this. And then I tuck them in the corner of the cutting board so that no one's caught without a place to sit. details are in place you might be wondering Sarah where's the food there is food and plenty of it over with chef Paul Lilikis at food friends family he's got a recipe to make the most delicious seafood steam pot that's gonna taste a whole lot better than this every Tuesday Paul's gonna whip up some amazing food for friends and family and I'm gonna set the table where you can serve it all it's a win-win Setting this coastal inspired table really reminds me of my childhood spent by the ocean and of the trip that the boys and I took on a lobster tour last summer, which was so much fun. No matter where you're setting this table in the world, I hope it makes you feel like the ocean is just steps outside your door. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to see more. I hope Tablescapes has you feeling inspired. See you next time.